is a show that focuses on the person behind the brony. I'm your host, Osaka Jack. Please sit back and relax as we talk to this week's guest brony. Hello everyone, this is Osaka Jack with Into the Spotlight. Today I have someone who has been in my neck of the woods, but is not anymore. Uh, Ori! Ori White Deer, hello. Konnichiwa. How are you today? I'm doing well. How are you? It is early, but I am approaching approaching functioning level. Not there yet. But I'm getting there. Ah, so I briefly mentioned it, but yeah, you have been in my neck of the woods. Yes, I have. Uh, I've been to Tokyo, Okayama, uh, a couple other places, Osaka as well. Okay, I, I highly approve of this. Osaka's a good city. I encourage everybody to come and visit and spend money before the Olympics happen. Hmm. Meet Okonomiyaki. Yes, Okonomiyaki is very good. I tend to make uh, the restaurants or the... Uh, I don't care for mayonnaise, so I tend to make them angry by saying only a little mayonnaise. <laughs> they love to drown it in mayonnaise. And I don't care for that. Also, takoyaki, if you like. Oh, oh takoyaki. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Sabi shisa. <laughs> takoyaki, if anybody doesn't know, it's a uh, ball uh, made of dough that has been grilled, and there's a piece of octopus inside. Good. It, it is good. I don't care for octopus myself, but yeah, that's good. And I have found that the uh, takoyaki makers are wonderful for making pancakes. I've heard that, and I heard that you can actually take um, small cupcake makers and pretend they're takoyaki makers for those still in the States. Oh, okay. I suppose that would work. You could, you know, if anybody wants to talk to me and have them have me buy a takoyaki maker for them and, you know, send me a little bit extra money, this is something I'm willing to do. Just say it, you know. <laughs> I'll but, take you up on that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk, we'll talk. But if anybody does is not familiar with your work, can you uh, describe what is it that you do? So, um, basically, my bread and butter is uh, traditional colored pencil art. Um, it's what I started doing way back when, and I've continued with it. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I got into ponies, I naturally said, okay, I'm gonna, I'll learn to draw this, and I'll, I'll do my usual thing. Um, I use... Crayola colored pencils, just the basic stuff, and um, Sharpie ultra thin pens to do the ink work. Um, scan it in, crop it up, and up, up it goes to DA. Oh, nice. So your stuff is actually done on paper, not digital. No, I actually do have a degree in digital art, um, but to me that's very labor intensive, where just drawing it out, coloring it in, it's more relaxing for me. Sure, so sure, it's sure. more hobby esque than a job. Per se. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you used them when you were here, but uh, Koopy? Oh, is that the stuff that's like, you will have a gorgeous experience. You will dream of sandy beaches as you write with our uh, with our implements. Um, no. They're, they're, they're crayons, but they're shaped like pencils, and they're incredibly smooth at coloring. I have not encountered those. I, okay. I was just enamored with the um, stationery, as ah. I just mentioned. Well, yeah, the stationery is good. I admit this, but no, Koopy are some of the best crayons I've ever found, and I am so happy that my career is one where I can compare crayons. Awesome. <laughs> but if I ever get the inclination to draw, that's what I use are the Koopy crayons. They're really nice. You, you don't need the the high dollar stuff, really. I mean, you can. There's nothing wrong with like Prismacolor or anything yeah. like that, but. You know, um, if you don't want to break your piggy bank, Crayolas, you just got to learn how to use them. Yeah, you know? very true, very true. Do you happen to recall what was uh, one of the first uh, pony pieces of art you made? Um, I'm trying to think back. Um, I was probably an OC, um, but like first, the first like pony pony, I think, might have actually been Fluttershy. I approve of this. Um, it's it's her aesthetic is lends itself well to my art style because I like to do curvy lines and she's nothing but curvy lines. So. <laughs> Very true. 
or is, is Twilight took me a little longer to do because her hair is, is a little odd, but yes, you know. yes. But, um, but I, I guess as time wore on, I found that I prefer actually drawing, um, the princesses, um, that body type. Okay. Because it's longer, it's thinner, it looks more elegant. Um, and I, I gravitated more towards like the Queen Chrysalis and mm -hmm. Nudge United and uh, Princess Luna and Celestia and Cadence. Sure, sure. Um, Have you considered uh, drawing any of the ponies in the princess body style, just not alicorning? I have. Um, I, I do tend to drift more towards the, I guess, super aesthetic or super. Um, I guess you like Art Nouveau almost is okay. sort of stylized. So like I wouldn't probably wouldn't do Applejack in that style. Um, I just don't. <laughs> yeah, that would look very odd. That would be quite odd, or or Rainbow Dash really. Um, but like some like some of the other ponies, like I I, I could probably see Twilight in that style. I could hmm. see obviously see Fluttershy in that style. Sure. Um, Pinky even um, and her her bounciness could do well in that style. So. Right. Right. Um, I try to I try to go for accuracy when I can, so I don't I don't go out of my way to draw um, the ponies much different than the style or the proportions that they're in. Sure, sure. I can see that. Which one do you consider to be the most challenging to draw? Oh, the ones that took me the longest to get decent, not even well decent, <laughs> um, were Rainbow Dash okay. and Twilight Sparkle. It's the hair. On both uh, of them. Ah, right. I see. So, um, Rainbow was actually easier, because once I figured out I don't need to ink in her hair, I could just use the colored pencils. Yes, and, very true. And use contrast. Hooray, contrast. <laughs> um, but Twilight's is just her hairstyle. It threw me for a loop at first, so. Sure. Though, one of the, uh, <laughs> one of the more recent ones that I do like that has been done rainbow is the uh hatsune dashu yes i i i am a fan of crossovers especially when i know what they're crossing over sure um and i'm a big vocaloid fan and so i thought you know hey i'm gonna mash up the most popular vocaloid with arguably the most popular my little pony character and <laughs> um i started doing a whole series after her because i'm like you know how can I mash these up, you know, another way? Mm -hmm. um, and, like, which pony style would really lend itself well to the Vocaloid style, so... Oh, that's an easy question right there. <laughs> oh. So that led I've... to the uh, Teto Pie? Yes, that led to Teto Pie, and um, what else do I have? Oh, and um, Wonderbolt's Magnet as well. Okay. And, of course, I did some OCs as, you know, as a mashup, but... Uh, I will reveal the next one that is about half colored, oh, and that is oh. going to be um, Luca Shy. Oh my! Okay, all right. So, so that'll be coming. Interesting. It's a uh, flutter, flutter, yay fever is what it will be called. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the names. A lot of people ignore the names, and that's about standards. Yeah. So. <laughs> Y'all don't know what Vocaloids are. Go look them up. They can be fun. They might not be your cup of tea, but they're fun for me. So. They are fun. It's yeah. I you know, I'm just gonna say that they're fun and just don't take them seriously. No, don't, don't. Best pony talk right there. You don't want to go there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose that could apply to most fandoms. Just don't take it seriously. Have fun and yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have to mention real fast uh, some of the ones that you've done. Very Japanese styled ponies. Hi. Um, two of the cuter ones that I've named are the Okashi Matsuri Pinky and the Ohanami Fluttershy. I'm channeling Andrea Lipman in my heart. Mm -hmm. She has mentioned that she'd like to go to Japan, and I offered to uh, bring her over here and pay her weight in sushi, and her, resp <laughs> her response was that she needs to gain more weight. Ah, I, I think I would have the same response, because sushi is awesome. Yes, it is. <laughs> 
But no, I'm just wondering the uh, origin of those. Did you have them fully planned out or just one day, oh my gosh, you know who would look good in a yukata? Well, actually, I think what's inspired, the first one was um, Ohanami uh, Fluttershy. Right. Because I was actually at Sakura Festival with my brony friends in uh, Washington, D.C. Okay. And, you know, I, I can't remember if ponies had come out by then or if they were just coming out in Japan. Sure. So I'm like thinking, oh, well, let's mash up some Japan and some ponies. <laughs> And I thought, like, because I had the image in my head of, oh, you know, like, I could so see Fluttershy enjoying, she loves trees, and they're pink trees, so she loved um, Ohanami, or if those of you who are not familiar, it's um, uh, Sakura uh, flower viewing. It's, it's mm, cherry just, blossom viewing parties, right. Yes. Um, so that's what inspired that particular one. Um, gotcha. And then that one got on EQD, so I was like, ooh. I, I think I'm onto something here, and then that spawned um, Okashi Matsuri Pinkie Pie, and I think there's a few other a few others I did, mm -hmm. but um, those were, those two that you mentioned are actually the most popular of that set. They are darn cute. <laughs> Absolutely, I do love how you were able to somehow work the Japanese traditional style footwear on hooves. It wasn't too hard because they're flats for the most part. I mean, some right? Of but them... they really wouldn't work. Well, no, they, they don't really... have toes. No, but then again, I guess when you're in a universe where ponies can lift stuff with their hooves, like pencils and and Very things true. like that, you know, Very you got true. a little bit of a creative leeway there. Yeah. Again, we won't take it too seriously. We'll just move on. Yeah. So I was. Uh, very related to those, uh, you had a uh, plushy yukata. Yes, that what was, was the story on that one. Once again, I think actually that was leading up to the Sakura Matsuri. Uh, oh, festival. okay. So I got my my Rainbow Dash at the time, and you know I thought, ah, oh, well, I actually was dressed up in my Rainbow Dash outfit when I went there, because mm -hmm. um, I had a, a friend of mine who would be dressed as Applejack. So I'm like, ah, oh, we'll do the, like the rival thing and see, you know, see how that works. So I decided, oh, well, I'll bring my Rainbow Dash plushie, but I'll put her in it. I'll put her in a yukata so she fits in. So, mm, okay, that's how that happened. I see. <laughs> and I noticed on there that you hinted that you would be able to do those for other plushies. I would. Um, just don't ask for the life size plushies, please. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, life size Cadence does not need to become an Ohime sama. She doesn't need it. But, uh, yeah, I, I, can, I can do um, small, small skill clothing and stuff like that for plushies. Okay, all right. Well, I guess that's a good segue into it. Some of the uh, more recent items that you've done have been sewed. Well, actually, you know what? Let's go back. Uh, something far earlier was the uh, Midnight Moon Fairy Purse. Yes, uh, that I made um, out of scrap fabric from the Luna that I had made um, about this time last year. Um and uh, I use that for uh, Renaissance Fair in, like, a little pouch. I see. Okay. And that one appears to be at least uh, pony-themed, if not specific pony. Yeah, it, it may or may not be related to a certain princess of the night, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, but uh, one of the more, uh, some of the more recent things that just, my goodness, the cute... The Huggy Boo? Yes, the Huggy Boos. <laughs> so, the story behind those is, is you know, I went to BronyCon, I was a vendor there. Um, when I first got into My Little Pony, um, before I perfected Dirt Wolf, well, I'll not sound haughty for a moment, <laughs> while I was working on my drawing, sure. um, I had seen um, a plushie, a Rainbow Dash plushie, sell on eBay for over $2,000. And I thought to myself, you know, I can learn to make plushies. <laughs> so, um, so I made some, or attempted to make some, like show accurate plushies. Like I, I think there's a cadence and a, there's a there on the DA. Yes. Um, but I made those entirely by hand. So I'm like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing this again. I know. <laughs> you know, not when you've got like White Dove Creations and others who just do these like just ridiculously good show accurate high quality stuff so i'm like all right 
what can I do to make affordable stuffed animals for both my poor hands and for consumers? Mm-hmm. And I thought, okay, well, I'm not going to do show accurate as well as these other guys. I got to think of something different. I got to, you know, got to be innovative. Um, so I thought, well, maybe not show accurate, but just cute. What, what do people like to do with stuffed animals? They like to hug them. Very true. Very so, true designed them, I made them very simplistic, um, very easy to make. I can actually make one of those, a smaller one, in about a day. Okay. And they just, all they want is to hug you. <laughs> That's it. Okay. So. I have to admit, the uh, first thing that came to my mind when I saw them, of course the idea of hugging came up, but also I thought of one of those inflatable bopper things that every time you punch it, it falls down and then gets back up because it's got sand on the bottom. Ah, uh, see, I don't, they don't, they're just, they're filled with regular stuffing. And I think a few other people said that they're like, oh man, you should put some beans in the bottom of those or something and make them like beanie babies or something. I don't know if it, the whole thing, but I, I, well, honestly, I don't know. It, it looks like they're easily stood up, but I think it, it reminded me of those things that just wobble over and never fall down because there are beans in the bottom. Yeah, but but do you really <laughs> want to punch? Do you really want to punch? No, Scootaloo? no, of course not. Of, of course, course. Not. so you just you want to hug Scootaloo. So that's why that's why I created them. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> and from what I can see, it looks like you've made five, yes. or just shown five. I don't know. Um, I think I I think. Those, what you see there is what I've made. I've made one more, okay. which I'll give a shout out to my friend, Mr. DJ Hollow Point. He, I made him a Spitfire, which I have yet to finish, but he will have the only Spitfire that I ever make because, man, was that a pain. Really? Just... It, it's the hair. Oh, yeah, yeah. Making the hair look nice. That's the hardest part of these things, so. I, I think we've come across a common theme. <laughs> in that some of the more complicated hair frustrates you. Yes, it's... <laughs> it's. So it's, if I were to ask you to make a uh, Huggy Boo cadence with the traditional hairstyle? Um... <laughs> I would not charge you the going rate. Uh, <laughs> probably charge you quite a bit more. <laughs> and um, I'm guessing I could expect it sometime next year, probably. Maybe. You play your cards right. <laughs> um, yeah, no, none I, of that. <laughs> I've heard no, I've heard no single thing be complained about more by artists than Cadence traditional Cadence's traditional hairstyle. It's, yeah, it's pretty, but wow, just mm, yeah, lots of colors and explosions of styles, and really doesn't work in the actual world and. Yeah, I gotta give Rarity some props, because man, did she make that work. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> oh. But, you know, it, it is what it is. Um, <laughs> easier to draw the hair than it is to build the hair. This is oh. true for a lot of things. It is, yeah. There are lots of things that do not work in the 3D world, but work very well on paper. Indeed. So if somebody, for example, asked for a Huggy Boo Hatsune Dashu? Once again, (laughs) I would not charge, because I I intended those to be inexpensive, because I don't don't want to spend too much time making them. People don't want to spend too much to buy them. Sure. Um, But, like, I made um, made my significant other, Mr. Enigmat, a a Princess Luna, actually, I just remembered. Mm. Um, Like... Nightmare Night Princess Luna, like, with the, the same material that I made the bag out of and all that. I'm like, you're lucky that I love you, because I'm not <laughs> making another one of these again. <laughs> okay, so some of the more simpled, uh, more uh, simpler designed ponies would be uh, more in the price range and easily a- achieved, I'm guessing. Yes, okay. quick, you know... The, the easier they are, the la- the less uh, colors I need to use, the less hair stitchy together I need to use, the better. <laughs> so really, we could use uh, Twilight or Rainbow Dash or whatever. Just ask for the discorded version. Have yes. it be all gray. Yeah, make them sad. Well, of course you want to hug them. I mean, come on. When Twilight 
starts crying and it forms the broken te- broken heart. Oh, just want to hug her. It's okay. It's going to be okay. I would caution against the, the, the grayed out huggy boo Fluttershy, though. She might not be very huggable. Very true. Yeah. <laughs> she might like, lay some traps for you on your way to hugging her, so <laughs> watch out. And I'm not sure Discorded Pinkie Pie would appreciate it very much, or at least admit it. No. I don't think she would either. <laughs> well, I just I just found out about it uh, before the interview. You introduced it to me, but one of the things that you're working on is a Tumblr. Yes. And this has a rather interesting backstory to it, doesn't it? Yes, it does. So, um, both myself and my significant other are artists. We are we're brony artists. Um, and as we were, I guess, first starting our wonderful relationship, we, we wanted to say, hey, like, why don't we, why don't we, we start something together? Why don't we do an art collaboration or something or a comic or, or something? Mm-hmm. So um, I have created a couple characters just, you know, having fun with aesthetics and making OCs. It's, it's fun. It's a guilty pleasure of mine. Um, we're taking a look at them, and I was like, I was kind of thinking of making an ask blog with one of these characters, and he, he thought it'd be a good idea. Um, I said, well, you know, why don't why don't you make some characters, and why don't we put them together and make it a Tumblr? And that is how the Cheeselings were born. Cheeselings. <laughs> Cheeselings. <laughs> um, is a play on the uh, Queen Swissless, Swissless, uh, Queen of the Cheeselegs sort of um, joke. Mm-hmm. Um, because I, I am a guilty, 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 horrible person who does quite enjoy alicorn OCs, and I quite enjoy changeling OCs. So we figured people are people who take this stuff too seriously are not going to like this, but we're, darn it, we're going to have fun with this. <laughs> so hilarious, uh, hilarity hopefully ensues on our Tumblr. Mm-hmm. Well, I think it definitely has potential. If nothing else, just get people that are angry <laughs> that you would make such a thing. Hey, if you want to be angry, cool. Yeah, I mean, well, luckily we have we have some pretty good friends that will that'll send some really bizarre questions our way and gives us give it gives us a bit of fun to poke at things and mm-hmm. make fun of some stuff, you know, in a lighthearted way. Um, but that's that's basically how it started, and you know, we've just been doing little comics and and things like that, and questions, so send us your questions, please. Okay, so general open one? Anybody can question? Anybody can question. Um, It is, it is, anonymous questioning is turned on, I would just say we don't support anything unsavory, so please uh, please keep your questions PG, and we will hopefully get around. Well, to be honest, you know what? Yeah, probably, I'm going to guess, ask whatever question you want, just not all of them are going to be answered, especially ones that are crossing the yeah. line. Exactly, and I mean, we, we poke fun at things, but it's it's all in good fun, and sure. hopefully, you know, you do the thing, you do the uh, idea of, you know, would I want my mom to see this? Yes or no? And if you can answer, yeah, mom can see this, well then, you know, send it on over. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned it uh, briefly a bit ago, but you were at uh, BronyCon vending. Yes. What that's... was uh, what was your big seller? My big seller was my Queen Chrysalis Snuvo picture. Okay. Um, that one did make it to EQD, and that one sold out Friday. It was gone. Like wow. buttons, buttons. Um, I think I had one poster left on Saturday that got sold in the morning. But that one was pretty much gone the first day. Wow. That's impressive. I was really very surprised, honestly. I, I thought, like, all right, I got all this Fluttershy stuff, you know, it's going to be gone. I actually walked home with quite a bit of Fluttershy stuff. I was quite shocked. Hmm. Well, you know, I honestly don't know, but I can guess from being at Everfree Northwest that every vendor has a lot of Fluttershy stuff. Which I th- I would uh, argue that uh, Fluttershy is one of the bigger sellers, but since everybody has a lot of her, it's very easy for people to have too much. Gotcha. I didn't see a lot of chrysalis. Yeah, I didn't either. Um, my uh, 
um, my significant other and I were both bending, I was dressed up as Chrysalis and, you know, ah. huh, that was fun. Vending in a very too tight wig all day. Oh. Was, the wig, uh, I do not envy you, but the Chrysalis, that would have been nice just, I, I think I would have all day been over like, so, do you love this? <laughs> do, do, do you love this work? Because <laughs> I'm hungry. Yeah. Actually, it was um because I was, I guess, an unknown artist. I, you know, I, I'm known in my small group of very appreciative friends, but uh, I had to do I had to do some stuff to get people on the table. So I was actually singing a um a happy jingle to the tune of this day aria to get people into the booth area. So okay. that that I, I had I needed many lemon drops after that at the end of the day. Sure, I under yeah, believe me, I understand. I. I'm actually getting over an illness right now, and I am so sick of lozenges. <laughs> oh. But at least there'll be, you know, tasty lozenges in Japan. Yeah. Meh. Kind of. Meh. For, for those who don't know, and I'm sure you're familiar with it, but um, lozenges in Japan are called candy. And they're called that for a reason. There is... There are, they've just started Halls and Vicks, but for the most part, those are the only ones that have any menthol or any medicinal items in the lozenges. Other than that, it's just a hard candy. And it doesn't work as well. I need the menthol throat. No. <laughs> yes, I wish there was a wonderful English phrase to match that phrase. I really do. Nah, I think the closest one is, like, it can't be helped. Yeah, well, that's... Yeah, shogunai, for anybody who doesn't know, the closest is, it cannot be helped. It's something you say when, well, there's nothing to be done about the situation. I think the closest I've come, if you go colloquialisms, is Homer Simpson saying, eh, what are you gonna do? Yeah, that, that's actually pretty accurate. Mm -hmm. It's just... If you do not, it's difficult to describe that in somebody to somebody to a Japanese speaker, though, because I have had a bunch of them say, "What is the English for shogunai?" And I tried teaching them, "Hey, what are you gonna do?" But it doesn't work. So yeah, we have to go with, uh, "There's nothing to be done about it," or "It can't be helped." Yeah, there's whole words like that, but yeah. uh, uh, I think uh, mechakcha is another one. Yes, this is yeah, that's another good one. Yeah. Uh, I'm a big fan of the show. Yes, the show. Um, I think this Which one's... Is, okay, so sorry, anybody who doesn't know... Uh, I'll do mine, you describe yours. The show is just kind of a... Right? At the end of a sentence. It's like, I know, right? Yeah, I totally. <laughs> Only less of a Californian accent. Yeah. And mine is um, Mendokusai, which is basically a pain in the butt. Yep. <laughs> Something, but it's not enough to make you furious. It's, but it's over a level of annoying. Yeah, it's it's really hard. Uh, oh, yasashi is another one. Oh gosh, yes. Yeah, I've heard it described before. People who come to Japan, they may intend on bridging two cultures, but in the end, they just become the bridge. No. Yeah. Hush. Not part of either culture, but kind of able to interact with both sides. So, there's a whole debate you can go on about language, but this is, oh, yeah. this is not that kind of interview. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, a question that I ask in each of my interviews, um, in all of My Little Pony, what would you say is the one line or one scene that defines you as a brony? It defines me as a brony. Oh, you know, I, I don't know if I can answer that simply because there's so much. It's like, oh gosh. Well, um, in my experience, uh, asking this question a lot, the first thing that came to your mind is usually the best. All right. Well, the first thing that came to my mind, which is what got me into ponies to begin with, was Twilight yelling, Spike! And I'll tell you why, because I have a little brother named Mike, and guess how I used to call for him when I was little? <laughs> um, and the reason why that's so significant to me is growing up, 
I always felt kind of like the oddball. I'm sure many people do. Um, I was always, I'd rather be reading a book than talking to people, honestly. Um, and I was a bit of a demandy pants and I thought I was right. And the fact that I, not only was there a character like me in the show or like my former self, I hopefully am not bossy in a demandy pants anymore. Um, no one is allowed to comment on that. Who knows me? Um, so you're demanding they not comment on that. Yeah. You've yes. Changed. <laughs> I've changed. Um, but th the fact that not only was someone like me in the show, but they were the main character that right. blew my mind completely. And I'm like, I've got to support this show. So we're talking like the absolute first season, like three minutes in when she bursts into the door. Pretty much, and she's just being a little demanding because it just it reminded me so much of my childhood with like my, my little brother Mike, who I would demand like Mike, I'm downstairs, you're upstairs, get me some juice. <laughs> and he'd be nice, and he'd do it. He was like my little assistant, you know. Nice. So, uh, just you know, I was not charged with noble purpose. I just wanted something to drink at the time, or you know, a snack or something. <laughs> And I was too lazy to get off my butt and go get it myself. <laughs> so hopefully you treated him a little bit more respectfully than Twilight does in the first scene. She, I don't. It always bugs me how Spike finds the book that she's desperately looking for. She magically whisks it out of his hand, causing him to fall face first on the floor. Doesn't say a word. This is, yeah. this is common with her. Bam! Yeah, okay, I got my book. I, I'd like to think I was a little better than that. I probably at least said thank you. Okay, that's good. Cool. Um, but yeah, it's just the, the lack of social graces. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to freely admit it. I was not the most well-socialized child. Sure. Uh, wasn't sensitive to others' needs too much. So I, I hopefully, once again, not incriminating myself, have gotten over that and have evolved <laughs> as a person. <laughs> The fact that you recognize that it was, at some point, a character flaw indicates that you have improved at least somewhat. I, I, I'd like to at least think so. I'm, try, I'm trying to help you out here. Go with me. Go with okay, me. Okay. I'm going to accept your help. Okay. I'm going to accept your help. <laughs> so. Well, you know what? I do believe that is the earliest answer. Woo so, yeah, yeah, I think of all the answers, yours happened earliest in the show, so... Until we get somebody that says that the theme song got them, or until someone gets, says, <laughs> oh, once I heard Once Upon a Time in the Magical <laughs> Land of Equestria. Okay, that's going to win. Well, I'm sure there's there's probably somebody out there, and I, I think I know a couple people that might agree with me, is when they heard the story of Nightmare Moon, they're probably like, oh, yeah, she's awesome. I, <laughs> I could agree with that. And honestly, the art style for the uh, storybook was really impressive to me. Yeah, that that did get me. I like the uh, yin, yeah, yin and yang effect that they, they yeah. snuck in there. Well, especially for me, once we saw Twilight, it was like, oh, okay, so they can do uh, very fluid moving animation. They just didn't do it for the book. Oh, okay, I understand. Yeah. Oh, that's another thing. My favorite color growing up was purple. Ha! So, there you go. <laughs> well, there we go. It's what it didn't have to take too long. Yep. Didn't have to do much. Were you a unicorn? That's the question, though. Um, you know, my nose was big enough to where I might <laughs> have uh, resembled a unicorn. Luckily, I've grown into that, so uh, probably not. No. <laughs> ah, but did you have this double streaked hair? There we go. Now this is the ultimate question. I have highlights, but I do not have double streaked hair uh, now. Okay. All right. <laughs> Well, are there any projects that are uh, coming up that you'd like to plug while you're here? Oh, any projects I'd like to plug? Well, I'm continuing on with the Kimono Ponies. I'm continuing okay. on with uh, the Vocaloid Ponies. Um, Cheeselings. I'm going to keep doing that. I think I've covered everything. Um, if any inspiration strikes, it'll be on DeviantArt. Mm -hmm. And are you open for commissions at this point? I am. Um... Uh, I've actually completed a, a few recently for some people on Tumblr. Okay. Uh, uh, basically, really creative idea. They had, uh, I believe, an idea for a race of ponies uh, that were like uncorrupted changelings. Um, okay. So I'll plug them. They're called Gamer Gates. Okay. Um, 
and I got a few commissions from that, and they were actually pretty fun because you know it's it's a you can be pretty creative with that. Sure. And that it doesn't have to be any certain way. It's mm-hmm. it's a fairy like pony. So. Honestly, if I had to choose a name for that, I would just call them mockingbirds. Hmm. I think they they described it as like a cross between an, uh, like an uncorrupted what it, they would think an uncorrupted changeling would look like and like a breezy from G3 just much larger okay well just, just my thinking is I, I absolutely I miss songbirds so much I love Japan but man there are no not many songbirds here unless you go into the mountains and I in our area there used to be mockingbirds everywhere who would never have their own song but would take from everybody else's and they would make it so beautiful Aww. well you'll have some karasu to hang out with yeah, this is true. But, and they are intelligent enough to recognize... I, 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 <laughs> if anybody doubts the intelligence of crows, I promise you that crows in my neighborhood recognize me. And they don't fear me, but they know to stay away from the trash that I'm walking by because I will, like, make a noise at them. <laughs> so they, they anticipate me. You should befriend two of them, and then you can become Sailor Mars. <laughs> I honestly, if I had more space on my balcony than the foot and a half that I've got, I might do that. Awesome. As is, I need that balcony to dry my laundry, and befriending crows, I think, would make it very difficult to put laundry out there. Oh. <laughs> they make it better. They they give you presents. Yeah, I teach kids. <laughs> True. Well, everybody, today we have been speaking with Ori White Deer. Um, be sure to follow her on Deviant Art. The Cheeselings Tumblr. And Twitter as well, correct? Yes, I am on Twitter. I am at DarkArtsy. Okay. And Twitter? Uh, YouTube? <laughs> I, I have a YouTube. I don't put anything on it oh, okay. because the only thing I was going to use it for was making Vocaloid Mega Mixes to send to people who've never heard of it. So I've got one video and it's got like three thumbs down and, like, one thumb up, and I'm, like, all, like, hazagashi over it. <laughs> okay. I understand. So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let that one, let that one slide away into obscurity. Oh. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming by and speaking with us today. Oh, no problem. Thanks for having me. Everyone, this has been Osaka Jack with Into the Spotlight on Everfree Network. We will catch you next time. Come on,